Uh, now on to the main event. Uh, real, real pleasure and great to have uh, Tim Alton along. I've known Tim, I think, for about at least good 12 years, uh, at least uh, when, when he was working at Craig and Tinney. Uh, I think we've actually got you along to one of our hill walks as well in the past. Uh, so I think we've had you up the hills with one of our groups. So uh, it's great to have you along. Tim, Tim is always friendly. Any, any time I've bumped into you, always wants a little chat. Sees how you're getting on. Real personal friend. Uh, gets on with everyone, which is great. Uh, now, what I didn't realise, I thought Tim was a seasoned railway professional, but it turns out he's not. He was actually construction industry first before he came across the rail. Admittedly, he came into rail in 1990, so uh, 30 years, but he's not quite seasoned yet. Only 30 years. I think I, I, I've actually got one more year than Tim, so I'm more experienced than yourself, but great to have you along. Uh, after quite a long career, at uh, Craig and Tinney with various owners uh, and various challenges with the uh, Class 92s and the HS2s. Uh, you moved across to Hitachi in 2016 uh, and has been part of the successful uh, 385 uh, fleet, uh, both in production and service delivery and uh, one of the top performing new fleets. Uh, I don't know if it's still top form, but it certainly was. Uh, and I believe it's, it's secured some recent a uh, uh, recent success, but I, w I won't steal your thunder on that one, Tim. You can talk about that. So, without further ado, uh, a special, nice, lovely, warm welcome to to Tim. Uh, we look forward to your presentation, and thank you again. Thank you, Ian and, uh, and David for inviting me along, and it's a real pleasure to uh, present to everyone tonight. And the presentation that I'm going to go through um, is about performance, but it's not down to one particular thing. It's about organisation. It's about uh, the collaboration that we've had within our teams, but more importantly, with our collaboration with our customer, ASR, and, and that uh, relationship that we've built up has led to the success that you've seen. And, and people, people play a massive part in that success as well, um, having good people um, about so I'm going to tell you a wee bit about sort of how we built up in Scotland and then um, to our current position just now. And now I'm the tricky bit, I'm going to try and um, present. <coughs> so hopefully you can all see that now. Is that okay, Ian? Can we see that? Yep. Yep, all good. Yep. Good, good at my end. Good at mine. I'm going to minimise this now because all these faces are blocking my presentation. Good stuff. So, yeah, so uh, for those who have got two screens, you can have one presentation and one with other people. So if that helps you, sorry, sorry, Tim, apologies. Not no problem. Um, that's it. And um, so, I am Tim Olton. I am contracts and commercial manager for um, Itachi in Scotland. Um, I was originally the position that I held when I first joined was mobilisation manager and I've worked with, and I know Gary's on here uh, to, uh, tonight, I uh, work closely with Gary in introducing um, the 385s into Scotland. We are um, very pleased that at last week's National Rail Awards that we've got, uh, we were awarded the Fleet Excellence Award. And again, as I say, that, that award is, is for the, the Class 385 train. But that is really down to the commitment and the uh, efforts of everyone um, from both, well, Gary's mentioned a few already, but from Hitachi, ASR, SNC Lavalin, everyone that was involved, Network Rail, all parties involved in, um, in the introduction and then the successful running of this fleet. I thought it was important to show you our team structure in Scotland because this is a team that has been in place for most of that um, from the mobilisation into the ramp up of um, into performance uh, into service sorry and then operating the, the fleet as they do today um, so you can see myself as con a contract commercial manager um, we've got Lisa Jones in as our quality manager and um, she looks after that. We're building that team up just now, so there's more people coming into that as we attempt, oh, not attempt, we are going to uh, improve the processes around how we work in Scotland and, and that team's going to feed well into that. Then down that leg, we've got the ASR uh, Fleet Performance and Planning 
planning manager and that's Craig Morrison and he's responsible for the fleet planning and also for our contract performance technicians uh, who do uh, performance analysis. Then we've got Stephen Williams in our maintenance control and he's got uh, our TRTs under him. So he's got two team leaders, lead technicians, 23, who are based around Scotland supporting the class three, eight, five in service. And then we've got uh, our maintenance control and our maintenance control sitting beside um, Scott Rails and Network Rails um, control as well. So they all work in the, in the one, work closely together in the one building and that works really well together. Then we've got uh, Craig and Tony, our uh, TMC manager that's Stuart Innes and he has got the Craig and Tony depot underneath him which employs over 270 people. This is a, a maintenance model and it's a, a planning led model um, not easy to tell from that because it's quite colourful in that, but in the, in the middle bit there, you see the key people, key things in their leadership, people, processes and resources. But we are planning led and planning leads everything that we do. And that, and that has been our success um, in our delivery up to date. So the class three, eight, five introduction, um, I think uh, delivery and that, everything around that has been well documented in the past, but as we brought units into service, um, we have the product that we were getting from the, uh, the factory was of a high quality. We, as we do with most fleets, um, introductions, we do have our issues, um, and there's a lot of snagging goes on with that, and even to today, we're still doing um, provisional and final acceptance of these units, but the product is proven to be um, a, a very good product that we've, uh, that we've produced from the factory. Um, as that uh, train was introduced into the UK, we done lots of, and, and part of um, that was that uh, we had to do lots of tests and um, acceptance testing and, and we've done that uh, across Scotland, the Czech Republic and Germany. What we did with our TSA team, so that's a team that I just showed you in that, um, that org chart, we spread that team around um, these places, started to learn about the product that they were going to maintain, look after and service. So we got that team very early engaged in understanding the technical aspects of the train from a maintenance and operational front. Our maintenance control and central planning cell, they were also put in early as well. We had them in early and we were using them in the testing phase. So we'd done lots of practicing with these guys while we were going through the, uh, the, the testing phase of that and we were using our control and our planning team to do all of that. So that was aimed being able to test our processes, procedures and operation. And then we work closely with ASR on the operational aspects to get as much intelligence on how these units were also performing. This wee tick box that you see here um, was what we put in place to ensure that we were as ready as we could be for getting ourselves ready for service. So we had, a, as you can see, we had kick off meetings, gap analysis, uh, final review. Then we went into the day of the life. Uh, and, and all this was done with the customer. So we had our uh, kickoff meeting, uh, we'd done our service and train handover, train movement, TMC train cleaning, handover, hand back, uh, maintenance repair concession restrictions. We ran through all of these, ticking the box all the time. Um, business continuity, what happens if something goes wrong, what, uh, things start to go down in terms of systems. Um, you know, what, what's our business continuity? How do we keep the railway running? And, and then our engineering elements to that as well. We also had on that, um, and then we took that um, into day and life sessions as well, where we actually walked through them bit by bit. So we'd done all that early in the project to, and, and along with the practicing so that we got ourselves into the best position, possible position for when we introduced trains into service. 
As with any new plate, we did not have our issues to seek. We had brake issues, uh, system issues, and we were around the design and with the screening. We had TMS uh, stability and Kanban issues uh, affecting multiple systems, causing incidents and impacting on performance. We rectified the screening issues that we came across, and this reduced the incidents, but it did not eliminate them. It was not until Mito IM in Japan came up with our software fix that this completely disappeared. And that, and that causes some real issues at, at the startup program, or uh, as we introduce more trains in, into service. Speed control units, the SCUs, um, we uh, had issues with them. We worked with our supplier in, in Switzerland, and we got our, our repair process in place. We were taking them off the train, sending them to Switzerland, getting them repaired, and we got through that program. And that suddenly, uh, between that and the software issues that we overcome, we saw our, our performance start to rise um, considerably. And external doors, we had process issues from the factory um, that we rectified, but by that time we'd introduced a lot of these trains into Scotland, so we had to rework these and rectify the affected units. So again, oops, I need to go back one now. Uh, one so train monitoring. So we've got HFMT and that's uh, our system that talks with the train through the TMS. Um, and our en engineering and our maintenance control team, they, re they review that this daily. They get alerts set up for them and they identify any issues arising and that allows us to start to look at and uh, mitigate any issues we see with uh, trains in service. And examples of these are, are the, the list that I've uh, just put there in blue. But, um, but there's actually over 6,000 alerts that we could tap into. Um, but we wouldn't ask for an, an alert email coming from each one of them or um, we would, it would just uh, become counterproductive into what we want to do. So we look at, um, these were the initial ones that are, uh, that I've just demonstrated there. Uh, we get alerts from these because we know we've got the potential for these to cause us issues. There is others and we are, and I know Gary's keen on this, that we do, we have a look at a lot more of what we can do. But we've got to do it in a staged approach that we do, and, and have a workable solution around each of them. Uh, we have people that are looking at these alerts in the background as well to see if we have any anomalies and identifying and these feed back into uh, uh, performance analysts and into an engineering team uh, as well so we can start to look and identify any trains that, uh, trains or issues with the fleet arising before they actually do. As I said we've got a central performance and uh, planning and performance analysts I just so I could show in a couple of photos here to be honest with you, but um, this is our office in Glasgow, they're based in what, 1 West Regent Street, the first picture you see with the big screen with the 385, that screen actually has lots of data um, on it, David when he visited he's seen um, the, the kind of stuff that we go through on that screen and then in the main office our business and uh, our performance analysts sit and they go through um, the performance stuff and they talk daily with ASR on that. Our TRTs, we have 25 of them in total, uh, two of them are team leaders. They support the units in the service during the day, protecting performance in a fast turnaround railway. Um, they support the driver and the guard with a meet and greet approach. They quickly rectify an, uh, any issues that are identified. They carry out che checks based on alerts that I've just spoke about from the maintenance control receive and they'll be in touch with them and get them to start checking things. Proactive management saves this information passed in onto our engineering team and performance analysts and this is a, again identifying a thing, start to look at things that we're starting to see trend. They might not be causing performance issues or causing any trends but we're, we're looking to identify what's happening. So these guys are eyes and ears and they're telling us about what's happening so we can start to put things in place before we do and start causing us issues. And as well as reviewing technical incidents, we feed back to ASR and operational deficiencies. So collectively, we improve together. There was a forum for this, and we received really good information on the fleet from the operator's perspective back to us as well. 
So this helps in, in, in us jointly improving the fleet A performance. And that's just an example of, um, unfortunately I've not got one, this is one that the ones that we pass across to, to ASR and we've also got one as well for the for the engineering side, but I'm going to come on to that soon anyway. So that's the kind of information that we gather on a daily basis and then we feed that back in, into the ops so we can improve the performance of that fleet. Um, and with that interaction with our TRTs as well, you can see then the impact we have on, um, you know, uh, on delays. So when we do have incident, you can see that the primary uh, is a, a 4.3 minutes. That's that's how long, uh, that's our average delay is 4.3 minutes uh, as of last period. So uh, 4.3 minutes, and you can see how that and how that trends, and and, and overall the impact of across. ASR's fleet is 10.9 minutes. That's the secondary impact of that. So our engineering team, they're based at Craig and Tinney. The team is led by Alison McPherson. Uh, they work with, closely with the TMC and our performance analysts. They're engaged daily with the ASR engineering team. They create investigation work streams for TRTs when we have incidents to ensure we identify root cause as soon as possible and they report incidents into a business-wide uh, failure report and a corrective action system, which you use, we'll all know as FRACAS. This process uh, within Hitachi has eight steps that must be followed and it drives consistency across all our uh, fleets, Hitachi fleets. So managing the, the current incidents, so, our biggest issue that we have with the fleet currently um, or over the last few periods has been doors and I'm going to use this one as an example for us but that was from our performance report last period there and, and that's the rule in six month um, periods and, and as you can see doors are the big hitter for us there and then underneath there's a deviation chart and that's where we monitor over three period change and we can see where some of the stuff that we're starting to do, some of the uh, mitigations, some of the uh, mods that we're putting in place demonstrate that we are starting to drive uh, improvements. So we do have that deviation, that chart that sits below that, that does tell us that we're starting to improve. And then our territory, territory systems, and, over, and again, this is just taking us down another uh, level of that. So if you, if you consider what I just spoke about when we're talking about the doors here, then we break that down again into where the, the issues sit, the door rotary columns, mechanical, adjust, mechanical adjustments. Um, I must have this on some kind of a uh, timer. <laughs> to go back. Uh, uh, there are um, door control units. Um, so you can see where we break that down again. And again, where our action plan start to make an impact with again the deviation chart that sits below that. So if we go to doors this is the action plan that sits in behind the doors and you can start to see that some of the stuff that we do and we have this similar for each system that we work where we're seeing it, uh, issues and we are putting work, uh, work streams in place to, to fix them. So this is the stuff that we're doing with doors just now. And this is continually updated and we work, we work and this is shared with ASR on a regular basis, giving the guys updates as well, so they can see that we are uh, driving towards improvement. So the reliability growth prediction plan, um, that's where we currently are as of at the end of last period. Um, and that that's based on some of the things that were put in place just now. That is just now, it's not as high as where we'd be aiming if we had our, our if we were running the full mileage that we would, we'd be looking to hit higher than that um, just now, but because we're redu running reduced mileage just now, but it, we have as of um, um, August the 3rd, and then unfortunately with the delays of uh, the incident at Pullman, uh, so it took the mileage run down again, but this is all based on 
the action plans that we've got in place, but also based on the mileage that's run with the fleet. So you that rely, reliability growth will grow for the next period, that will go up based on the mileage that we're predicting that we're going to be doing. And this is just an example of the mileage you can see since COVID's um, and the, the, the massive drop in mileage that we've done over this period. And that, and that, that impacts on our, our plan. So Hitachi fleet performance, and um, what I would say about that is that some of the stuff that I've went through uh, up to now is all discussed around um, our processes and what we've got in place and our collaboration with the with the customer and all the good work that we that we've done up to now. That is uniformed across our, our business. Uh, these processes and 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 it is our approach, and we are developing as a business. We in the UK, although we had the three nine fives um, at the Olympics way back, um, our uh, GWR and then Great Western and then uh, ASR and Azuma, they they fleets have, have been introduced since then. And then we've got TP on the back of that. And now, we're, as you can see from there, we've got six different um, services and um, fleets that we're running now. And of the six fleets, six fleets are occupying uh, the top nine, and the, they're in the top nine performance um, for new trains. So it shows that we are doing something right. We, we have had our critics. But it shows that we are heading in the in the right direction. Um, we are we're still evolving as a business. We um, you listen to Andy Barry; he's been talking about one Hitachi, and Jim's been talking about one Hitachi, and and that's where we're heading. And Gary will know this through the different organisation charts that I've thrown at him over the last few years. But we are evolving as a business, but we are evolving for better. We are learning, and and that and that. I can see that now coming through in a lot of the stuff that we're doing. Um, so yeah, we, we're making massive positive strides forward. And that's a, a thank you from me. Um, that's our team at Craig and Tinney. Um, that gantry, they can't, uh, I've been asked about load testing on the gantry, but not many people on them. It's safe for that work, uh, for the people standing on it. So that becomes a question back to myself. But that's our team at Craig and Tinney. That was at the point when Craig and Tinney came over to Hitachi in November of 2018. Um, you have 385 in the back of that, and then you can see the gantry that we put it, that we installed prior to the 385 arriving in Scotland. And as I say, thank you. Is there any 